So now that he's all uh, geared up and ready to go, not that it'll help too much, but you know, every little bit. Wow, okay, uh, didn't take much, did he? Yeah, that's the thing with these uh, locuds. They're pretty simple to kill. It's not really that, uh, unless they uh, start attacking you faster than you can swing your sword, but that's uh, not that difficult to deal with. Does this sign say anything? Apparently not. Okay, let's just keep heading uh, in this way then, because this is the only way to go. Okay, this room. Um, there's a bunch of new enemies in here called Insectors, and if you can see, they kind of have they have like a scythe-like arms there. So they kind of have like sickles, pretty much, on their um, arms. I think um, Undine magic would be the most effective weapon against them if you're a magic user at this point in the game. But uh, otherwise, just keep slashing at them. Eventually, they'll go down. Uh, I don't. I don't know how jab trait weapons work. Well, yeah, actually, you know what? Let's find out. Let's uh, equip the bow since I haven't used the bow in a while. Eh, it's not too bad. It's worse than the uh, sword, but oh well. Oops. Yeah, they have like sickles as weapons, so you gotta be careful because they can swing in a pretty wide arc with their sickles. So just be careful, and uh, if you want, you can attack them from long range to avoid the sickle completely. Although, eventually, if they attack you enough, they will get a death blow like thing where they can actually hit you from pretty far away. But, for defeating all of them, the hero gets his own sickle. So, now the heroine and the hero have... both have a sickle. More enemies to deal with here. Ooh, that, that must have hurt. <laughs> and Watts gets a level up. Not that I really care, but, you know, at least it restores his HP. We got up here. The point right now is that we just want to, I'm just trying to kill off everything I can because uh, I want to be at a certain level um, when I get through here in order to make a certain um, effective boss strategy, if you will, uh, become a reality. I'm pretty sure you can do it regardless, but uh, well, you'll see when we get that far. So, uh, actually, I think I can uh, tell a uh, quick story while I'm here. Wow, I just jumped into that guy. Ow. Now I'm dark. Crap. This is the darkness status ailment. You'll see that black cloud above my head. And um, it's kind of a bastard status ailment because it uh, prevents you from really hitting effe very effectively at all with your weapons and stuff. So, uh, just when uh, the Blood Owls use that Dust Storm thing, just be careful. I think Stardust Herbs? Yeah, Stardust Herbs cure it, so. Oh, they also have uh, some Wind Magic, huh? Do I have Wisp equipped? Let's take a look. Yep, I do. Much better. Alright, let's uh, head through these guys. Okay, so um, the little story that I can tell you guys while I'm uh, waiting for this guy to come down. Here, have some. Um, the little story I can tell you guys is one of the research credits that I was doing, um, the one that I did, I think it was last week or something like that. Hang on one second, let me just check where that goes real quick. Uh, well, nothing important, but take what you can get. I think I'll go that way anyway. Okay, um, so one of the research credits that I was doing for my psychology class was, um, I guess you could say it was about... Um, it was something about peer pressure because, um, let me see, what was the, uh, what was the term called? I forget from my psychology classes. I'm kind of out of it today as far as uh, remembering stuff goes. And might just be because I haven't really been, uh, I've been kind of tired, but oh well. This is totally going to hit me, isn't it? Yep. As you can see, I'm pretty tired because I'm not even paying attention to the reels right now. Sign doesn't say anything. And they've got all these signs that don't say anything in here. Um, so it was essentially on peer pressure, and what they would do is they had um, you go into this uh, room, and they had six people in the room with you. So, and what you would do is you would um, look at these signs that had these three lines on them, and the lines were, you know, in different differing sizes and stuff like that. And you would look at them, and then there was a fourth line that they would um, show on, like, an overhead. And they would say, which line of the three lines looks the most similar to the line shown on the overhead? And uh, 
uh, so I was I went in there and I was doing this uh, test and stuff and you know it started it's a pretty simple task as you can probably tell because you just uh, pick out the line that you know looks the most similar so you start out and it's pretty easy everyone can agree on the same exact um, line being the correct line and everything like that uh, but then when the test uh, moved on a little bit and we started getting into uh, lines that looked pretty similar regardless, it started getting a little bit weird because what ended up happening was that the um, other people in the group, um, because there were seven people total, I was one of them and then there were six other people. So the other people in the group started to um, say the line that wasn't the most similar. Like you wanted to look for similarities in length for the line. So, um, like, you know, if there was one that was a certain, um, certain length long, and then you, there was one on the overhead, and there was always one that matched the one on the overhead in this, um, set of three lines. So, and at first everybody was saying, you know, the same line because it made sense. That line was the one that would, um, that looked like the one in the overhead. But, uh, as we continued on, the, uh, people who were doing the test with me, um, started not only to guess the, mo the incorrect line, they all guessed the exact same line as the line that was most similar, even though it wasn't the line that was the most similar. Like, what they would do is, you'd have like a short line, a medium line, and a long line, and they'd, and they'd show you a medium line on the overhead. Why do I keep missing this one? They'd show you a medium line on the overhead, and, you know, I would be like, oh, the medium one is the most similar. And then they would all say, oh, the long one is the most similar. Which is, uh, as you can imagine, it was kind of weird for me because I was like, what are they, stupid or are they blind or something? Do they forget to bring their glasses? Because if you have glasses, you're supposed to bring them to these experiments. But um, eventually it got really weird because they all started guessing the ones that were obviously wrong. And the, w the weird part about it was that it wasn't just one person guessing a certain one and it, another person guessed a different one. Every one except for me was saying the exact same line was the most similar in length, even though the line that they were saying was completely wrong. It wasn't the line that was correct. So, I started getting pretty weirded out by this. I'm like, wait a minute, what, are they crazy or something? Because, um, I mean, I knew the line I was talking about was the line that was most similar in length. Can I get down this way, or do I have to go up this way? I think I have to go up this way. I knew the line I was talking about was the most similar in length, but apparently they had other ideas so as the test wears on I'm starting to wonder am I the one going crazy here so <laughs> finally um, we finish up this uh, test of um, all this stuff and so once we finished it up uh, I was I was asking them hey what's going on here why were they guessing a different line than the one I was um, saying and um, like I said earlier it was a test for peer, essentially a test for peer pressure do I have darkness no good um, it was essentially a test for peer pressure. So, um, they were guessing wrong because the six people that were in the group besides me were what we call confederates. What they were, um, and by confederates I mean they, um, were working with the study group and they were deliberately making wrong answers to see if I would give in to the pressure. And it was a test of the, so of social, of, um, social psychology principles. Uh, so I was kind of uh, part of the minority at the end of the test because a lot of people, no kidding, there's monsters around here, a lot of people caved in because um, of the fact that they wanted to do what the group was doing in an attempt to gain acceptance. So it was, um, that's what it was, it was a test of conformity. <clears throat> so, and this was a study done, if you're interested in psychology, it was a study done by um, a researcher named Ash in 1959, I believe. And um, the principle was to see if people would um, cave into conformity or do what was correct. Because as some famous wise person once said, what is right is not always what is popular, and what is popular is not always what is right. That was So it was a test of that. Now I went down here again, I'm not going to fight the monsters, but I wanted to check to make sure that I had a death blow. If you are using the sword, you want a death blow at this point. So I'm going to save again real quick, and I might have to cut the recording off here um, just because of the fact that there's something specific I want to do coming up in here. And um, it might take a little bit of time, and it might take multiple takes, 
but when I do get it, it's going to feel damn good. So, um, I'm going to, uh, I might have to cut it off here, so if I do cut it off, it'll fade here, and then, you know, I'll, uh, show up, uh, when I get it right, but if not, then, uh, I might just do it right here, so. If I have to take multiple takes, then I will be right back. If not, then let's go. Whoa. I guess we found the mithril mine area. Hey, if you guys are miners, how come you didn't find this earlier? Oh yeah, look at all this stuff. Huh. Well, it doesn't look like there's a lot. And Whoa! Look at the crystals in that thing. It's juicy! Not that we'd eat it, but eh. We're not the facade. Huh? What's that voice? I don't know if you guys can read that, so I'm gonna read it. Ankig, my servant, expel the intruders. Protect the mithril! Huh. wonder where that came from. Whoa! What's going on? Wisp, what did you do? Oh, wait. Wisp isn't the cause of an earthquake. Okay! Boss time! And uh, I don't know if you can see it under the ground, but there's this little thing moving, and then eventually it'll come up above the ground and create this, like, sand thing, sandstorm, uh, like, quicksand area in the ground. This is supposed to be the Sword of Mana version of the Antlion, and uh, it's kind of weird, and it kind of lags the screen a little bit. It'll go underground, it'll come up from the ground and c create this quicksand thing, and then it'll move around. Now, if you have the sword, this is no problem, because if you can line it up... Ow, I just hit it the tail. If you can line it up so that you're horizontal with it, and then use the death blow, well, I'll show you. Ha ha ha! Take that! You can kill it in one hit with the death blow. I got that on the first try. Awesome. But yeah, um, every part of its body except for the tail is a target. The tail is, um, it can hurt you, but you can't actually target the tail as far as I know. <laughs> Your best fight? I'm the one that did all the work. Um, but yeah, if you can line it up horizontally and then just use the sword's death blow, you can kill the thing in one hit, even if it's at full HP, I think, because it only has like 300 HP, so it's not that difficult to kill, as you saw there. <laughs> but, but how are we going to get this uh, mithril crystal out of the um, out of the thing? I mean, we didn't bring the dud bears with us. Oh, well, that's convenient. They managed to dig a shortcut over here. Yeah, they do come in handy. Huh. But that voice was pretty weird. Well, we'll learn more about the voice later on, because, uh, oh boy, if you thought that the mysterious voiceover is gone, then you probably haven't played an RPG in a while, because usually voices like that will come back. Hey guys, I brought him back. Can, I, can you trust me now? I'm happy for you guys. Ah, eh, you're fine, Capo. You had work to do anyway. Oh, it's no problem. It's nice to be appreciated. Yeah, really. He wasn't dead weight or anything. I mean, he just uh, distracted it while I got ready. Yeah. Oh yeah, we did. Well, I suppose it's be it was um, a little bit different odds than in Final Fantasy IV when you have to beat the Antlion. Oh man, that was hard. Huh. I don't know, but that might be frowned upon a little bit, guys. Well... Yeah. <laughs> no, that's bad. They're killing innocent people with your weapons. Don't you uh, feel bad for that? <laughs> 